Hi guys, Drew here with Smokecraft Barbecue, and today I'm gonna show you how I do competition chicken thighs. So today we're gonna start off with some chicken thighs. First things first, when you go to competition and you're picking out chicken thighs, uh, you definitely wanna make sure you get the all natural chicken thighs. Um, you don't wanna get anything that's been plumped up, uh, you don't want to get a generic brand, spend the money on the chicken because chicken first off is really cheap in the grand scheme of things and it's only just a dollar or so more to get something that's that's significantly better. So today we're using um, the Nature's Promise uh, chicken brand, chicken thighs which actually come from Springer Mountain Farms. You can get these at Giant or Food Lion. Uh, but Springer Mountain Farms, all natural chicken. Um, so these are actually fantastic. When I'm buying chicken thighs, I'm looking to get four packs. These are four packs here. So for competition, I'm taking 16 to 20 pieces of chicken. So four to five packs. But most important to me, I'm looking at that weight size. The weight on these chicken thighs, I want to be between 2.25 pounds and 2.4 pounds. And I want to get four or five packs of these as close weight wise as I can, because I'm going to cook 16 pieces of chicken. So sometimes I'll get 20 if I'm not sure I got all the good pieces. Usually in here, three out of the four pieces are about the same size. And you get one piece that's a little bit smaller or one piece that's bigger than the other three the same. So we want to get, today we're going to go ahead and we're just going to do one tray for, for uh, practice. Uh, and the tray is eight pieces of chicken. So we're going to go ahead and cut these open. Things you need when you're doing, uh, when you're cutting your chicken thighs, you need two types of knives. First off, you want a flexible boning knife, like this beautiful Wusthof section boning knife. Reason I like this knife is because you can see it, it bends and it's super flexible. So this helps me get in uh, to tight spaces. You also need a chef's knife. We're gonna use this because we're gonna cut off the knuckles and we need the weight of a good chef knife on the end. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut this open, cut around the side, make sure we don't cut into our chicken and open it up. All right, so each pack, like I said, it's about four thighs. We have four pieces of chicken. So usually what I do when I'm at an event and competition is I kind of take the bottom off of this because I've got to cook a lot of pieces and I'm going to put my chicken back into this pan before it goes into the main pan. Okay, so let's just, let's grab a piece. You can see here, you look at these four pieces. I got one piece that's a little bit smaller than the other three it looks like. So exactly what I was talking about. So either way, let's go ahead and start with a nice piece here. All right, we're gonna go ahead, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna try and pull out this, this skin. We don't wanna pull the skin necessarily off because you want that skin to be attached, but you wanna make sure we get those fatty edges of the skin out of there. So I'm gonna lay it out best we can, kind of see where it sticks so we can wrap it all the way around. See, it's gonna stick on that edge, which is fine but we're gonna pull it back just that edge for just a moment as we go ahead and trim this out. Now, when I'm looking at my thigh, I really wanna square this thing up. So this is where having this, this sharp knife is helpful. You can see the knuckle on the end here. This is not gonna be any good to eat. So we're gonna go ahead and there's a, a spot right on here which you can feel with your bone, with the knife that's gonna fit right in in a notch. And I'm gonna use the very end of my knife here. And I'm gonna pound it right through, pull it, to, pull it off and get it off to the side. Now, sometimes, depending where you are, you may get a little piece of uh, cartilage on the end there. And we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna cut that piece of cartilage out as well. Keep it all straight on the end. Okay. Now on the top of our thigh, this, we're gonna go ahead and just square this up and make it nice and square there. And on the back side here, this knuckle here, we're just gonna try and trim this knuckle down, just like that. That way it's nice and flat. So we don't. We wanna make this pr pretty simple. Some little pieces of fat here on the end, we're just gonna go ahead and cut this off right along that fat line. Again, squaring up our piece of chicken. Now the advantage of using um, an all natural thigh is usually we have uh, much thinner pieces of, of skin on top. So what we're ultimately gonna do here is we're gonna wanna wrap this around and make it you know, nice in a square. Um, we want it to kinda of look like a pillow shape when it's all said and done. So something like this was there. Now we want, we can wrap that skin all the way around if we want to. Sometimes it's a little bit too much, so we'll just cut a little bit of the excess off. But the whole idea of leaving our skin on is to make sure that we have 
lots of really great moisture retention as we cook. And this piece here, this got a piece of skin that's kind of just sticking way off the end here. We do want to wrap it around just a little bit on the ends, but sometimes that piece has a little bit too much fat on it. You know, we'll just take a little bit of the excess skin off. And if you want to carefully here, you can take this piece off here without pushing all the way through to your skin. Because again, we want to square, have a nice square thigh. And that piece there is just a little too much. So we got a nice little wrap, we got extra skin. We're gonna wrap it all the way in. You can see we got a nice, perfect, little shaped chicken thigh right there. Let's do another one just so we can see it side by side, but that's a really good starting point. Perfect, look at that. That's a that's perfect little chicken thigh right there. Okay, so let's put that to the side. So I always kind of put them in back into the pan here on the side one by one. So as I put them in, they hold their shape. Now your chicken can get prepped a couple days ahead of time before you go to an event, or before you go to competition. It really just depends what you want to do. Um, so if you want to get it done ahead of time, take advantage. No problem, you can do it a couple days ahead. So you maybe want to vacuum seal it so it holds that moisture uh, while you travel. Okay, so same thing. I'm not going to pull the, ch the skin all the way off. Notice how I'm not even scraping the skin. I'm not really worried about scraping the skin so because it is really nice thin skin. I'll show you how we avoid that later. So here, again, I'm just looking at that fat on the side. We're going to go ahead and take that fat off because that fat's not going to render down. I'm just going to cut flat in the corner. Let's flip it over. Let's look at this side. See, we got a nice big chunk of fat here. I don't really want to dig too much in, but sometimes like that, you know, we don't want to spend too much time worrying about it. We're going to just take a little bit of it off because it's just visible right on the top. But chicken's chicken. And again, we want some of this moisture here as we cook it. So it's beautiful. All right. So again, just laying it out, squaring it up. On the top, same thing. I want just I've got the skin off to the side, so I don't have to worry about cutting through the skin. But again, we're just gonna square up the top of our chicken right through. And on the bottom here, we got that knuckle. So again, this is where our big knife comes in. You uh, fit it right in, see it hits that notch right there. Bang it right down, cut it through. And again, I just got a little bit of cartilage I missed on it. So we'll go ahead, get that cartilage out of there, make sure that there's no bite that a judge could bite from a corner um, and get. Uh, with a giant piece of cartilage on it. Uh, all right, I got it. Okay, cool. And so now, same thing as before on this side here. You know, if there's, any, if there's anything here that doesn't feel right, run your hands over it. Go ahead, trim it out. Don't need to worry about trimming on any of this stuff. Get it out of there. Got a tendon right here. That's not going to be any good. Let's get rid of that. And every piece of meat is just a little bit different. So how you go about it, just approach it the same. Okay, and again, we're going to cut this little knuckle off. Right off the top here. Using our big knife. See if we can. Turn it sideways if we got to. Bang down. Let's get that edge off there. Didn't quite get it the way we wanted it. There we go. All right, so there we go. Take our skin, see where we're at, kind of wrap it back around, fold the whole thing up. See, we're gonna have some excess skin on this side over here. That little bit of fat, it's not gonna render down. Let's cut some of that off. This side here looks pretty much okay. We're spreading it out. Again, a little excess on the top and the bottom. This part of the fat here is a little bit fattier. We don't need all that, so we'll just cut that as well. So let's go ahead, let's roll this one up. See how beautiful it looks. Notice again, I didn't detach the skin, so it's gonna hold onto it nice and tight, and I got a nice, beautiful, all natural looking piece of chicken right there. So let's go ahead, and what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of these up, and we'll be back in just a few minutes, uh, and then we'll begin to show you the next step of what we do here with our chicken thighs. All right, guys, so I went ahead and finished up all my chicken here. So now you can see I got my eight pieces of chicken here, um, all trimmed out. You can see they're nice and roughly about the same size. We got two pieces, like I said, that come in like almost every single pack. You get one piece is a little smaller. So you get two smaller pieces, but we got six good pieces. And for judging, you know, we just need six pieces to turn in. So we're going to go ahead and cook them all um, because we got them. But this is why I buy four or five different packs 
and I cut my chicken ahead of time to make sure I'm only going into competition with perfect size chicken. All right, so we've got it all cut, trimmed. They're all roughly the same size, so I'm gonna take one more step. Now, sometimes you hear about people scraping skin and trying to get skin really thin. By using this all natural chicken, the skin is already much thinner and much better. We don't have to worry so much about it. But just to be sure, I'm gonna take this thing called a jacquard. And what this is, is this has got some blades that's come out of it. And I'm just gonna hit all of my chicken with it a couple times each way. And that way I make sure that I'm perforating the skin just a little bit. So when you take a bite, it's just gonna, uh, you're gonna be able to have that perfect bite through skin. So literally, I'm just gonna go pop, 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 pop to every single piece. So three over, you can see how it's putting those little tiny holes in, and that's it. I don't wanna, you know, I'm not using this as a tenderizer, I'm just using this to make sure that that skin is gonna break through when we cook it. We're gonna take a couple other steps too to make sure that it's nice and uh, perfect, but this is just kinda like a don't take a chance, you know? Why not do it? You know, it doesn't take any time at all. And it really just, it's a just in case situation. So that's all I'm gonna do. You can see those little tiny holes that perforate in there. They're not, it's not gonna tear the skin apart while it cooks, but it is gonna be nice and easy to make it break apart when a judge takes a bite. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and brine my chicken. So brining uh, basically means, is, is essentially is the same as marinating. Uh, so I'm gonna take my chicken and I'm gonna kind of lay it in here inside a one gallon freezer bag Just like I want that chicken to sit in the pan And I'm gonna put all my pieces of chicken. I'm gonna do eight per uh, Eight pieces of chicken per bag. So a competition. I'm doing this twice I'll get them nice and flat. Get them all the way in there. Push them tight, push them all the way down. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, some chicken broth and I'm gonna just take some regular chicken broth. Um, uh, you don't wanna get the reduced sodium ones. You want regular chicken broth that's available at your grocery store. I'm gonna take one quart of it and I'm literally gonna pour this entire thing of chicken broth in here. You can get, uh, um, there are plenty of uh, bird boosters out there that you can, that are powdered, that you shake up with water, um, that you can inject or everything else. But you know what? Barbecue is supposed to be simple. And so let's try and keep it as simple as we can. So what I'm gonna do, seal it, fold it over, try and get all that air out of there so it's, everything stays fully immersed. All right, and oops, I got one piece of chicken that flipped over in there, but it's fine, I'm not gonna go play with it. All right, so I'm gonna, now I got my chicken and my chicken broth. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put this into uh, a pan. And I'm gonna put this into my cooler. We're gonna let it sit for five hours. So in five hours, we're gonna come back and then we're gonna go ahead and get ready to smoke this chicken. So we see you in five hours uh, to show you the next steps. So we've been waiting for five hours for our chicken to soak in its chicken broth. So now it's time to take it out. What I've done here is I've got ourselves um, I have a sheet tray with a uh, drying rack on top of it because I'm going to put the chicken out on it as I shape it and I want it to drain, but we're going to go ahead and season it also right away. So let's go ahead and let's get to it. So we're just going to take the pieces out and then we'll reshape them, fold them as needed to make sure that they are nice, juicy, and tender. Oh, they, they feel fantastic. All right, again, so we had these in for about five hours in chicken broth. Um, and we're just gonna reshape these here really quickly as soon as we take them out. So don't worry about them being, you know, a little bit all over the place. Because we know that we can get them nicely and well shaped here. Okay, so there are eight pieces of chicken. And let's zoom that back up. We are done with this chicken broth, so we're gonna store that away okay great so now we got our chicken here so let's go ahead we're gonna take each each individual each individual piece here just begin to shape it back up just a little bit so it's gonna look kind of like what we want it to go when it gets into our pan here but what we're gonna do here first 
uh, as we wrap this wrap these pieces back up is we're gonna start seasoning on the bottom first. I'm just kind of shaping them up just for a moment just to make sure that everything integrity wise is held together. Everything looks okay. If you have any flopping pieces or something that just doesn't look right, you're always welcome to you know, clip it off um, and so forth. So let's go ahead and flip them over. And as I flip these over, I'm gonna put them on my tray all just kind of the same way with the uh, knuckle facing up just so I know how they are and then um, we're going to season them and then we'll come back oops want to go ahead keep keep it just like you're going to flip it back over okay so all of them knuckle up okay great so now what I'm going to do I'm going to take my seasonings now, again, this is competition chicken, so I'm gonna put three different seasonings on here because I want layers of flavor. We're gonna start off today with uh, Big Papa Smoker's Desert Gold. This is like a lemon pepper, so we're gonna do on this first. Then we're gonna do our Sugars Bar Barbecue American All-Star. This is a great everyday all-purpose rub that's just got some great barbecue flavors. And then we're gonna add some savoriness to it here at the end with Sugars Barbecue Clucking Awesome Chicken Rub. So we're gonna just go through them one at a time, and we're just gonna get some nice, uh, some nice even seasoning here. And we're gonna do first layer of this lemon pepper. Do relatively light layer, nothing too crazy. Again, this is the bottom of our chicken, remember. So we're gonna do the bottoms first, and we're gonna let this sit for about 30 minutes before we put the top chicken before we flip it over because we want to make sure that these flavors have time to kind of begin to soak in and pull out on the uh, pull out all the juices on the bottom. All right, so that's it on the lemon pepper. Again, yeah, so really just a nice light uh, starting base. Now we're gonna do your American All Star. This is our barbecue rub. You can see I'm going just a little. This is a little finer than the other one, so you can see I'm just going a little bit more. No, but I'm going nice, even, back and forth, all the way from the top. You know, you can see I'm just working that wrist about six inches above the chicken. Okay. And now we're going to go to our last one, our Clucking Awesome, uh, which has got that savoriness, which is why we're going to put it on last, okay? So, again, we're going to go ahead, go over... Get a good seasoning. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, who, who aren't competing and are just wondering why we're putting so much seasoning on this, you have to remember that competition barbecue is one bite food. So we have to pack as much flavor as we can into that single bite uh, for the judges. So the judges really are just wowed by all the really amazing flavors. Um, so, all right. So that's looking good. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna leave this alone and we're gonna leave it at room temperature again. It's a nice cool night out tonight. You know, so we're gonna leave it outside. Um, you could put, leave it on your trailer or your countertop if you're working in a kitchen. Um, we're gonna leave it for 30 minutes. We'll come back, we'll flip it over, we'll reshape them when we flip it over. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our final seasonings on before we go ahead and move them into our pan to smoke them. All right, so it's been 30 minutes. And as you can see, our chicken is beginning to sweat, which is perfect. So we're now gonna go ahead and start seasoning this and getting it ready to go into our pan by flipping them over. Now what I'm gonna do here, you can see the reason I put it on this rack, you can see all that liquid that was kind of draining out of it. So what I'm gonna do here um, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab each one of these individually and then I'm going to uh, put them directly into my pan as I'm ready. So I got my three seasonings and I'm gonna open them all up so I'm ready to go. And that way I can do each individual piece shape it and put it into my pan. Now I'm gonna grab this kind of by the bone and by grabbing it by the bone, I can go ahead and shape it up, wrap that skin right back around where I want it. And now I'm gonna take it away from the other, uh, other pieces, get all the edges all at once. So again, Desert Gold, American All-Star, and finishing it with some clucking awesome. And you want nice, even, good covering. Okay, and so now I'm gonna take this piece 
that I have shaped up here. And I'm gonna go ahead, shape it up in the end of my pan. And we're gonna start putting all these pieces next to each other in the pan. So that's piece number one. Okay, here we go again. So again, notice how I'm shaping it up, wrapping it around into that nice uh, pillowy look. Get that skin all the way underneath it. Hold it in tight. And then we'll go ahead and just season it nice and light. Desert Gold. American All-Star. And Clucking Awesome. Okay. And once again, then I'm gonna carefully place it right into my pan next to my first one as we go here. So again, grab by the bone, roll it out. And your hands, you're gonna begin to get a little bit of rub on your hand and that's fine. You just wanna make sure as you season it, you season them evenly. And the reason I'm going ahead and putting them straight into the pan now is because you can see how delicate they are since the skin is loose. And I don't want to try and move these again and worry about messing up my rub. You know, I want my rub to kind of set into place. And once they're in the pan, I don't have to move them again. And I don't want to put too much, you know, if I have a spot like that where I mess it up, I can just spot that piece of uh, chicken but I don't wanna to put too much rub into my pan because I want the chicken to have the rub on it. I don't want that rub to be uh, sitting, uh, too much excess rub in the pan that could end up making it too salty or get too much flavor um, as it cooks. So again, just one, one at a time, get that good cover. Try and make them all as even as you can. Get it on the sides, don't forget your sides. Okay. And you can see what I was talking about, how we fit four to side. So we have four pieces of chicken that kind of fit perfectly. Oh, and I got a little bit of side there. Again, I'm just gonna hit that just a little bit, but I don't wanna go too crazy. You see on this one, I missed just a little bit, so I'll put a little bit more. All right, so let's go ahead, let's get these last four pieces in. Okay. So now we got all of our chicken rubbed. Chicken's all in place. We take one final look at it. Make sure we got all those edges on top. Oops, pull it upside down. So we just wanna make sure we got all edges done. We're gonna let this sit now for another, 50, uh, another about 30 minutes. And then we're gonna go ahead and get it into our smoker. We'll do a couple final steps to make sure it's ready to go. All right, so we've been waiting for another 30 minutes here on our chicken. So now we're gonna go ahead and get this ch uh, chicken ready to go ahead into our smoker. Today, we're gonna be cooking our competition chicken on our 270 GS uh, with some B&B &B lump charcoal uh, and some apple wood. So we've got this preheated to about 300 degrees, which is where I like to cook chicken for competition. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, get this final uh, little piece here ready. We're gonna take some Kerrygold uh, Irish butter. This is a creamy, uh, got a little higher fat content to it. This is really nice cooking, um, cooking for competition. You wanna get that butteriness and creaminess. So we're gonna take a whole stick here. I'm literally just gonna cut this up into uh, tablespoons. So I'm gonna use one stick per pan. So I'm gonna use this entire stick of butter in here and we're gonna kind of stick it in, uh, stick these pieces in, around, in my pan, in and around my pan. So you can see I got some space in the middle, you know, so we can kind of put these in between each of them, like hold a little space, you know, it's gonna just melt as soon as we get it in there. Um, so we can put those in here. And then I'm actually gonna cut the, break these in half, and then I'm just gonna kinda like, sh you know, put them up along the sides. You know, we want this, we want it all to kind of melt down as we go here. So you can just cut these pieces in half. Okay. 
don't worry about its placement so much because it is going to melt. Just don't put it right on top of your smoker or right on top of your chicken. And then again, we can put a couple pieces here on the end. You can kind of push, use it to kind of like get in, push that chicken a little bit tighter um, on each side, you know, uh, on the ends. That's one way to do it is to put a piece of butter there. It'll begin to hold that chicken in just a little bit tighter as it cooks and begins to hold its shape. All right, so we've got our pieces of butter in. We've got this ready to go. And I'm gonna do one last thing here with this. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take some, I uh, can't believe it's not butter spray. And I'm gonna spray the top of my chicken. So I'm just gonna sit there and Spray in the top. So again, this is just gonna give it, try and help us break down any fat that may be on the top of our chicken. Give us some good color, flavor. That's it. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead, put this on my 270 GS, which I've had preheating. Uh, what's cool about this thing is we can have direct heat or indirect heat. Um, and it has uh, trays in it If we were doing a competition, I'll use two of these so I can drop one down, put another on top, and put two different trays in and slide them in. But today, since we're just doing one, I've got a single shelf in here. So, I'm just gonna open it up. Put my chicken in. And I'm gonna let it go for about an hour, and then we're gonna check in on it, uh, and we'll go from there. So we'll see you in about an hour. All right, so it's been just about an hour on our uh, chicken, on our 270 GS. Color's looking fantastic. Right now, I don't want to get to get any darker. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wrap up our chicken. So let me go ahead and grab it out here. You can see how beautiful it looks. This is where we are right now. And you can see how absolutely gorgeous this looks in terms of its color. You know, it's looking really, really nice. It's got a nice firm set color on it. But again, it's beginning to get a little dark, so we're going to stop it right there. So what I'm about to do here is I'm gonna take uh, a probe and I'm gonna go put a probe into one of my biggest pieces of chicken. And I'm gonna poke it right through into the middle there. And I want this to get, uh, we're gonna then cover this whole thing up, but I want our chicken to get to 196, 198 degrees. And that's when we're gonna stop it, take it out, sauce it, and know that we're ready to go. So I'm going to take a piece of foil, and now I've already put that probe in there. I can just work my way around, get the seal nice and tight. You know, we want to hold all this moisture in here, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and now carefully put this back in. put it in this way because on my 270 GS I can run my probe right out the back and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hook it into my thermal works uh, smoke which I already have set for an alarm to go off so now we know exactly where we are we're at 150 degrees 153 degrees so we're gonna keep it cooking in here until we hit 196 degrees uh, and then we're gonna be good to go so we'll be back in just a minute as we get a little bit closer. I'm going to show you what we're going to do to heat up some sauce so we can get these things sauced uh, and ready for our final presentation. All right, guys, so we're getting close on our chicken here. So we're going to go ahead and make our chicken sauce real quick. I already have a little bit mixed up here, so we're going to just add a little bit more to it because when we do chicken, you want to have lots of sauce so we can dunk the chicken all the way through it. So to make our chicken sauce, we're going to use four things tonight. We're going to use our Sugars Barbecue Rodeo Candy Barbecue Sauce which I absolutely love, it's a fantastic sauce. Then we're gonna uh, thin it out with a little bit of apple juice. And then I'm gonna add just a touch of maple syrup to it. And then we're gonna stir that up, get nice and hot. And then I'm gonna melt just a little bit of some Kerrygold Irish butter in. Now this is different than the butter we put in earlier. We, earlier we used salted butter, but for the sauce, I'm gonna use unsalted butter. The reason I'm going to use unsalted butter is just in case I over season the chicken or the chicken tastes a little bit salty, I'm not adding more salt at the end. If we want to add a little more salt, we can do it with a little bit of salt sprinkle after we take a bite, uh, but this just keeps us from getting a salty sauce. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on uh, here real quick. And I have just a little bit of the sugars, uh, barbecue, and, um, and apple juice already. So my ratio here, I'm doing one cup of sugars barbecue sauce. And so since I already poured some in here, I've got about another half cup. We're gonna go ahead and put that half cup in here. And then I'm gonna put a quarter cup. I'm gonna put a quarter cup of, um, I'm gonna turn this down really low because I don't want it to bubble. One thing you don't want to do with your barbecue sauce when you're doing competition is start, start to have a bubble because that's how you can burn your um, your barbecue sauce. So I'm gonna put uh, a quarter cup of apple juice in here as well. And actually what I'm gonna do because it's the end of the bottle, I'm just gonna pour it right into my sugars bottle, shake it up. Shake, 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 shake. Barbecue sauce. All right, so we put our barbecue sauce in there. And now what I'm gonna do, normally when I'm doing a full competition cook, I want a quart of sauce because I normally have 16 pieces of chicken. I really want that much sauce. But today what we're gonna do, um, so basically you're gonna double this recipe. So what, you, what I have in here, we have two cups of sugars, rodeo candy, a half a cup of uh, apple juice. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add, one tablespoon, just one tablespoon, of some maple syrup. And you want just some amber grade maple syrup. You really don't need more than this because it just adds a nice little glossiness, a little glaze. It really just brings out some really fantastic flavors. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna heat this up here and I'm gonna stir it all together. You need to see how, what the great color of this sauce is gonna be here. Beautiful, beautiful mahogany red. And what I'm gonna do is I got the low heat on. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one tablespoon of my Kerrygold unsalted butter, and I'm just gonna whip that in. Again, just one tablespoon. We don't need more than that. So Again, each one of these is eight tablespoons, so you just kind of mark it. It's just an eyeballing. And this is softened a little bit because I've had it out, so that's fine. And I'm just gonna put that one tablespoon of butter in here. And now, once I put the butter in, I gotta stir, 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 and, and keep stirring until it completely melts into the sauce. Um, otherwise, it's gonna break. And we don't wanna have like a greasy top to our barbecue sauce. So we're gonna stir it in and that heat is just gonna melt and it's gonna be nice. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna keep stirring here. Our chicken is about to be done. At, once it hits 196 degrees, um, 196, 197 degrees, we're gonna go ahead and pull that chicken out. And then I'm gonna show you how we sauce this chicken um, and we're gonna get back in the smoker one last time. All right, so our alarm just went off. We are at 196 degrees. So as I'm talking here, it's gonna bring it to 197, which is our target temperature. So what I've done, I've got a set up here. I'm gonna put our hot uh, pan right here. I've moved our hot sauce into this uh, dipping thing. So I'm gonna put the sauce here and then we're gonna put it onto this rack, which is gonna go right back into our smoker. So let's move quickly here so we can show you what we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and just unplug my probe because I know that we're there and I just don't wanna get in the way as I try and lift this off. So I'm going to lift, lift this off carefully, and bring it right here, and now we're going to get a chance to take our first look at this chicken uh, since we wrapped it up. Be careful when you remove it. Yes. All right. Oh man, so you can see all the juices that have come out and we're just removing that probe, getting it out of the way. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these pieces of chicken, okay? One at a time, and I'm gonna put them into our sauce and with one hand, and I'm just gonna drizzle, you know, I'm gonna basically dip it through and get that sauce on top of it. And we're gonna, usually I have a little bit more sauce but this is gonna be perfect for what we're doing today. Just go right through, sauce it up, and put it there. All right, again, no better way to do this than them, but do it by hand. So again, just sauce, 
pour a little sauce right on top of it, let it kind of do its thing, dip through. And actually, I'm gonna turn these so I can fit them all on here. Let's put sauce right on top, just like that. So much juiciness. Again, right here, this is exactly why you want tons and tons of sauce. You want to be able to just dip right through this, move on to your next. There we go. Just pour that sauce right on, let it drip right off. Go ahead, get it on there. And our skin pulled back a little bit on some of these, which is gonna happen. There we go, that time I got a nice little overrun, got that sauce right over the top. Now this one here, you can see the way that the skin pulled back on it, this is not gonna be usable for turning because the way the skin pulled back, but that's gonna happen sometimes. That's why we cook so many. All right, perfect. But we're gonna use that as a taster regardless. Get it on there. I got two more small pieces here. Again, I'm just kind of looping them through. Just want to make sure we get them all on here to put back on. There we go. Just move these up just a little bit. And one last piece. Okay. So now we got our pieces of chicken here they are sauce up ready to go we're gonna go ahead and put them right back on the smoke let the sauce set for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna go ahead and plate it up all right so we'll close this up we'll see them in about 10 minutes all right so it's been about 10 minutes so we're gonna go ahead and get our chicken off now oh yeah Okay, so our sauce is set nicely on top of our chicken. Okay, so our chicken's now ready. So again, in competition, what I'd be doing right now, I'd be mixing and matching, pushing them together. But because again, we only cooked eight pieces and this was a practice cook, um, I'm gonna just set them on this board today. What I will say is one of the last things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, my apple juice spray and I'm just gonna spray nice, right across the top like that. So I got this nice wet look as we put them on. Now, as you turn your pieces in, you want to just carefully grab them, you know, put them, you're gonna pick up and move them. And you're just gonna put them, I try and keep all my bones out so they're all the same for my judges as I put them in. Looking at pieces, trying to keep them pretty consistent. And yeah, so I'm gonna put this one right here, and this one right here. So based on what I cooked today, those are, are my six best pieces. That's what I would be presenting to our judges. Um, and you know, we'll put it in a box, you put it together nice and neat, have it touching, you wanna make sure that you don't have any edges or anything splotchy on them. So let's go ahead and what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna try a piece that I didn't put in. These are our two smaller pieces that we had left. And we're just gonna take a bite and we're gonna see how the bite is and see if it needs any salt or anything like that at the end. Mmm, so juicy. You can see how it's a perfect bite. Great flavors all the way through this. Um, so our judges, they're just gonna take that one bite. But you clean bite, it didn't pull the skin back, it goes right to the bone. The juice is coming out of it. I'm just gonna take a second bite because I just, I can't. Mm. And then, just look at that. Perfect bite. Skin pulled off a little bit because we lost our integrity after taking that first bite there, but that's what you're looking for. This doesn't need anything else. This is ready to go into the judges. So folks, I hope you learned something about competition chicken today. Um, this was just a backyard test cook. 
gives us a good opportunity to try some things. We hope that you take some things and try it yourself. Uh, try your different flavors, try your different sauces, try your different rubs, you know, try different wood and see how it works. You know, if you have a bunch of pieces, you, t you can pick and choose and put together. But at the end of the day, this, is, this wouldn't be a bad turn in. Just from a t tenderness and taste point of view, this is absolutely fantastic. We hope you learned something and we'll see you next time.